وإذ يعدكم الله إحدى الطائفتين أنها لكم وتودون أن غير ذات الشوكة تكون لكم ويريد الله أن يحق الحق بكلماته ويقطع دابر الكافرين تبارك الذي نزل الفرقان على عبده ليكون للعالمين نذيرا السلام عليكم and welcome to another episode of the Quran Xira in the previous episode we spoke about the changing of the qibla how it was a test for the believers and this occurred in the second year after the hijra in today's episode we'll be discussing the battle of badr the very first battle in islam and this occurs very shortly after the changing of the qibla but before we discuss the battle itself Let's discuss some of the context. In Mecca, the Muslims were persecuted, tortured, boycotted and some were even killed, all without retaliation. And after the Prophet وسلم, the Muslims migrated, Allah reveals the ayah, أُذِنَ لِلَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَ بِأَنَّهُمْ ظُلِمُوا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ نَصْرِهِمْ لَقَدِيرٌ Allah says that permission has been granted to fight against the Quraysh because the Muslims were oppressed. He then elaborates on the oppression in the next ayah. He says, الَّذِينَ أُخْرِجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ بِغَيْرِ حَقِّ إِلَّا أَنْ يَقُولُوا رَبُّنَا اللَّهِ The reason that the Muslims were oppressed was because they worshipped Allah alone. So after the Prophet ﷺ established himself in Medina, created the constitution, established the masjid, and then the process of congregation or salah, he then implements this ayah. He starts by sending scouts to do reconnaissance missions on the Quraysh, intelligence gathering, and he learns that the Quraysh are about to have their annual trade to Syria. In this trade, every household of Mecca would send goods to be sold, and this forms the bulk of their yearly wealth. So the Prophet ﷺ learns about the details and the logistics of this trade, and he plans to intercept. And this would have completely crashed the economy of Mecca, and the Muslims would have regained some of what they lost. So as the time approaches, the Prophet ﷺ announces to his Sahaba, whoever amongst you is ready right now, come with me. And he was deliberately secretive in case there were munafiks or hypocrites present and as they would not follow him blindly. So when the Prophet ﷺ gets to a safe distance outside Medina, he then informs them of the mission. He takes a head count, roughly 313 Sahaba and 100 camels. So one camel between three people and they begin marching. The two Sahaba that were paired with the Prophet ﷺ, they say to him, O Messenger of Allah, you take the camel for the whole time and we'll walk. As Allah says in the Quran, لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتُعَزِّرُوا وَتُوَقِّرُوا we believe in Allah and His Messenger and we honor Him. But the Prophet ﷺ's answer gives us an insight into his character and his tactical genius. He says, Neither are the two of you any stronger than I am, nor am I in any less need of the ajr. And this answer is so beautiful because it removes any guilt that they may have felt whilst the Prophet ﷺ walks. And also, it serves as the greatest form of motivation for those that are marching in the desert and facing its difficulties, the heat, the thirst, how exhausted they are and then seeing the Messenger of Allah going through that with you. The news and the happenings of the desert are typically passed through travelers and Bedouins. So Abu Sufyan who is leading the caravan to Syria, he hears that an army is assembled from Medina and he then decides to switch routes to Syria. He then sends an envoy back to Medina saying the Muslims are coming for your goods, so send an army to intercept them. Given that their wealth is at stake, they rush to war. They gather around the Kaaba and they make dua, O oh Allah, whichever the two armies is more noble in your sight, grant them victory. Not realizing that they're making dua against themselves. Allah says, if you're asking Allah about the victory, then know that the victory has already been given. And then later in the ayah he says, Regardless of your numbers, it will not avail you because Allah is with the believers. A short time passes and the Prophet ﷺ now hears that the Quraysh have formed a large army and they're coming for the Muslims. So the Prophet ﷺ does something that you'll see constantly throughout his seerah. He does shura. He seeks the counsel of his companions. He asked them, what do you think about meeting an army that was coming prepared for war? And some of the Sahaba became hesitant. As Allah says, كَمَا أَخْرَجَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَيْتِكَ بِالْحَقِّ وَإِنَّ فَرِيقًا مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ لَكَارِهُونَ Allah had brought out the believers from their homes in truth, but a party amongst them were unwilling. Allah then proceeds to gently rebuke some of the Sahaba in the next ayah. He says, يُجَادِلُونَكَ فِي الْحَقِّ بَعْدَ مَا تَبَيَّنْ كَأَنَّمَا يُسَاقُونَ إِلَى الْمَوْتِ وَهُمْ يَنْظُرُونَ That some of them were arguing with the Prophet ﷺ regarding the truth after it had become clear to them, as if they were being dragged to their deaths. Put yourself in the shoes of the Sahaba. Most of them didn't have weapons or basic armor. Some of the Sahaba didn't want to meet the army, but Allah had a greater plan. The Battle of Badr is known as Yawm al-Furqan, the day 
where truth becomes undeniably clear from falsehood. Allah says, That Allah should establish the truth and abolish the falsehood, even if the disbelievers or the criminals dislike it. A short while after this, some of the scouts of the Muslims, they capture two strays from the army of the Quraysh, and they begin questioning them. Then the Prophet extracts information from them. He asks them, How many camels do you slaughter a night? They say, about 10. So the Prophet estimates that they are 1,000 in number. And then he gathers, that amongst them are all the senior leaders including Abu Jahl and Umayyah bin Khalaf. The Prophet becomes very happy by this. He knows the promise of Allah to be true. But some of the Sahaba become even more worried now. If the senior leaders are here, that means they've brought the best of weaponry and armor and the best horses. But the Prophet reminds the Sahaba, regardless of whichever army that you meet, Allah has promised us victory. It's important to note that not every Sahabi is like Abu Bakr anhu. It's okay to find something difficult, but he minds ensuring that you obey Allah and his messenger regardless. So now that the situation has become clear, the Prophet seeks counsel of the Sahaba again. He asks them, what do you think we should do? And as always, Abu Bakr is the first to stand. He says, we will follow you regardless of whatever you decide to do, our Messenger of Allah. The Prophet asks again, what do you think we should do? Umar stands and he says, we will follow you whatever you decide to do, our Messenger of Allah. And the Prophet asked the question for the third time, what do you think we should do? Another Sahabi from the Muhajirun, those of Makkah stands. Seeing as the previous answer wasn't sufficient, he says, We will not be like the people of Musa Islam and say, Idhab anta wa inna hauna qa'idun. You and your Lord go and fight and we will stay right here. Rather we say, you and your Lord go and fight and we will be right there with you. But this wasn't sufficient for the Prophet He asked for the fourth time, what do you think we should do? And Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh, one of the leaders of the Ansar of Medina stands, and he says, Perhaps you mean us, Ya Rasulullah. He says, have we not believed and followed you? We swear by Allah that which he has sent you is true. Even if you lead us into the ocean, we will follow you. We are vicious in war and sincere and I hope to meet Allah. And this made the Prophet I'm very happy and this brings us to the conclusion of this episode. In summary, look how the Sahaba went above and beyond the obligations. The Ansar only signed up for defensive jihad to protect the Prophet within the bounds of Medina. And also look how much they sacrificed. Let's take them as role models and sacrifice at least our time to learn the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet That's all for this episode. See you in the next one. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. If you enjoyed this video, why don't you consider subscribing? Leave a like, comment down below and share. Jazakumullah khair.